Well, welcome everyone. Uh, we're here in our breakout session of manufacturing. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and have our uh, participants here uh, introduce themselves and um, just maybe give a brief uh, background as to where you work and what you do. Uh, Andy, why don't you go ahead and go first? Sure, thanks, Alicia. Uh, so Andy Salsuedo, um, I'm the college recruiter for our research and engineering group. Um, what I do is I, I fill basically co-op positions. It's a little bit different um, than an internship. One of the things that we focus on are students um, from school who start out and do basically either a single term in the spring, which is what we consider like January through the middle of May, or a fall term, which would be basically the middle of August to around um, the holiday season, about Christmas time, um, and then, or double term, right? Which would be that spring, summer, or summer, fall. And then what we end up doing is we bring students back um, for the following summer if they're, if they're still in school and wanna come back. So um, instead of necessarily having an internship, we hold those summer only spots for returning co-op students who wanna get a different experience, maybe a different location. Um, from a manufacturing standpoint, we're looking for students that are interested in working in um, our manufacturing sites all across the country in electrical engineering roles, uh, mechanical engineering roles, uh, process engineering roles, and uh, a little bit of product development too, um, even though that's more so um, outside of the, the manufacturing realm kind of. Um, but again, really in, in for everybody that's listening to this, really focusing on electrical, mechanical, and process roles in our manufacturing sites. Great, thank you. Mitchell? Yeah, so I'm Mitchell Tyson. Um, I work with Georgia Pacific as a mechanical project engineer. Um, my position here at the company is we are given various small to large scale capital investments. Um, we then complete all the mechanical design work on that, the estimating, um, and then follow through with the project management, running that project through to completion uh, until we turn that over to the operations team. Um, so what we are looking for are mechanical, electrical, and process co-ops um, to come and work at our facility. You'll get to work side by side um, with all the full-time employees given the exact same roles and responsibilities as those full-time employees being allowed to run and manage your own projects, um, just like if you were a full-time member of our team here. Um, so we are looking for, like I said, uh, co-op positions for both terms, um, similar to what Andy said, um, co-ops then, if, if you do a good job, you like it, you're interested in the company, um, we could be invited then to come back subsequent summers and just work that as an internship. Great. Um, it might be helpful to the viewers if you could describe, uh, define what co-op means versus internship or give us some definitions for that. Um, both of you, if they're different or happy to hear from both of you. Sure, I'll go first, Alicia. Probably very sim similar to what Mitchell was saying. Um, how we really define it is, is taking, a semester off, taking a semester off of school. Um, so in order to, again, do that spring semester, you'd be taken off you know, that January through May uh, school schedule. If you're doing a fall co-op, it'd be taken off that August through December schedule, your fall term. Um, one of the things that, you know, in some cases, depending on how large the school is, what kind of program the school has, you know, that school might have a defined co-op program. Uh, we recruit at a lot of schools that kind of define what the expectations are for those students based on the curriculum and when those students are available. And so a lot of it just depends on what particular school you're from, um, how it's set up, but we very much here at Kimberly-Clark will work with you, um, just like I'm sure Mitchell's gonna talk to you a little bit about. Um, you know, if it says, in some cases we have students, for instance, I'll use Purdue University as an example where they're very much set as far as what semester that they can do the co-op if they're in a certain program, like if they're a biomedical major or if they're a mechanical major, it's very well defined by the school. In other cases, it may be, you know, it's more on the student as far as, okay, working with your advisor, talking to, you know, him or her about taking that semester off of school, what it'll do as far as, you know, putting you, um, you know, maybe in line for classes for a particular, another semester, et cetera. But really how we define it is just being able to take that semester off of school. Yeah, pretty much just what Andy said. Um, we have the same definition for the co-op and internship um, where we expect that the semester off of school for that co-op. Um, 
I know that's not always the most attractive because everyone's pushing that graduation date. Um, but the reason we think that's so valuable is as you're working with us here on these projects, um, we wanna give the students, the co-ops, the opportunity to experience the full tuition of a project, to be able to build that budget, develop a scope for a project, you know, get that budget approved. Um, we wanna allow them to get through the construction phase of it, working with contractors, forecasting and budgeting a project. Um, and with the smaller three month summers, um, most of the projects do stretch far past that duration. Um, so we wanna give everyone the opportunity to fully experience that process and what it means uh, to work with part of our team. Great, very student focused. Um, let's see, um, perhaps you can each talk about uh, what type of, of internship opportunities your organization has. And I don't know if you might want to weave in locations or regions where those might happen. Yep. So, so again, just really, you know, as far as the internship, um, really, again, not focused on the internship, but as far as the co-op along with then um, the following year, being able to do more of what, what the students are, are looking at for an internship standpoint, we're looking at um, positions. Last year, we filled out about, a, filled about 185 co-op roles mm -hmm. um, across the U.S. And with our manufacturing sites, if you look at the Kimberly-Clark map, a lot of our manufacturing sites are in the southeast um, and kind of in the south. So you're looking at Texas, Oklahoma, and then a lot in um, South Carolina, Georgia area, um, and then a little bit up in the northeast as far as um, New Milford, Connecticut, and uh, Chester, Pennsylvania, and then a little bit in the Midwest, of course, um, with Wisconsin. So that's really the locations of a lot of our manufacturing sites. And then one of the things that we do too um, is really focus on students um, at what we call our staff locations, which would be here in Wisconsin in Nina, um, and then also Roswell, Georgia, which is right outside of Atlanta. Yeah, similarly, uh, once again to Andy, um, <laughs> GP, we, we have locations um, throughout the US, very similar. Um, we're pretty heavy in the southeast U.S., uh, you know, Florida, Georgia, um, Texas, Oklahoma, but we also have a couple locations up towards New York. We got, you know, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, Michigan. We have some out towards Oregon and Washington. Um, so from a, a co-op standpoint, there mm -hmm. are opportunities across the U.S. If you're looking to travel, looking to, to find something new, try out a different place um, for a, a slightly extended period of time. Um, Myself, I primarily recruit for the Green Bay operations. So up here in Green Bay, we kind of have some unique opportunities where we have our corporate office, our Broadway mill office that I'm out of, and also our, we call it our Nina Tech Center, which is kind of our R&D facility. Um, so up here where, where we're recruiting, we kind of have some unique opportunities to allow students to, to get to experience the manufacturing side of things, working in the mill atmosphere. Um, but they can also see what the project management looks like from a corporate standpoint, where it's a little more management um, and a little more traveling, if that's something you're interested in. And then also they have the opportunity to uh, get to experience what our tech center has, which is a lot of that device development with uh, paper towel dispensers, um, various stuff like that. Um, so you can kind of get a, a little bit of a taste of a couple of different areas of what GP has to offer. Um, just if, you know, maybe you find manufacturing isn't your cup of tea. Um, there's opportunities there to see see some other scenes. Great, and about how many, um, Andy mentioned the number of interns that they hire, what would you say yours, if, if you know? Yeah, I, I don't know that information offhand, so I don't wanna, don't even wanna take a guess and be wrong. <laughs> no, completely fine, mm -hmm. completely fine. Um, let's see, what are um, the best ways for students to find open opportunities at your companies? Definitely. So students can go to our website, um, thecareersatkc.com, and actually look at our college page, which we have our different positions posted, um, kind of like what Mitchell and I were talking about as far as there's going to be a process product materials position out there, there's going to be a mechanical position out there, and there's going to be an electrical co-op position out there. Um, though there, there's just three that show up on the careers page, but then what we do, of course, with all the positions that we have, uh, we move students to those particular roles. And so um, by all means, those are the three positions the students should look at. We're also, you know, constantly doing different events and recruiting on Handshake. 
Um, there's a lot of partner schools within the Wisconsin system that participate with Handshake. And then of course, um, LinkedIn, you know, I'm on LinkedIn, definitely reach out to me. A lot of students do that directly. Um, that's a great way to just start a dialogue and, and have that conversation with me about, you know, what the student's background is and what they're interested in. And I'm very much, you know, willing to engage and, and talk to them a little bit more about the Kimberly Clark program. Great. You answered some questions I had uh, <laughs> without me asking, so that's terrific. Mitchell? Yeah, and, and once again, very similarly, <laughs> um, <laughs> we have uh, the social media platform or uh, the social platforms as well. Um, positions are listed on the, the GP careers page uh, for students to look up, you know, formatted almost identically to what Andy said there. Um, and then we also like, um, at least I know for sure on the mill level when it comes to recruiting, uh, we love to make that connection at career fairs on campus. We love to be able to shake hands, um, get to talk with individuals and kind of get to meet you face to face and interact with you um, just to kind of get a feel if, if you'll be a good fit for the, the culture and the environment that we have at our facility. That's great. Uh, when do you want to hear from students who are interested in the, your company's position? Um, you know, when do the positions open up for applications and um, kind of along that line, what are expected materials uh, a student applicant would be submitting? You want to take this one, Mitchell, first? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, mix it up a little. <laughs> mix it up a little. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Good idea, Andy. <laughs> um, as for when positions are posted, um, that I'm not sure offhand. I know come fall and career territory, career fair times. Um, that's typically when I get heavily involved in the recruiting process. Um, and I know positions are all posted um, pretty much at the start of each semester. Um, positions will be posted through the career fair. We do heavily like to do a lot of our co-op position recruiting at career fairs, um, mm -hmm. partially for those reasons I just mentioned that we like to be able to meet the individuals, um, shake your hand, have a conversation with you. You know, that the positions that we're filling at least at the mill level, um, they do require a fair amount of interaction and conversations with contractors, you know, um, other engineers, uh, the technicians out on the floor, even up through our mill uh, leadership team. So we do like to find individuals and make that personal connection um, and find people who can carry out a conversation um, and can interact well with people. So we do do heavily lean on those um, activities, at least at, at the Broadway mill level here in Green Bay. Um, I forget what the second phase of that question was, if I missed part of it. Um, you got... Oh, any materials that students uh, have to submit? Thank you. Um, the, the only materials that at least um, we typically look for is just a resume. Um, okay. Nothing else special besides that. Just like to get okay. a good feel for how you're doing academically and, and mm -hmm. what sort of extracurricular activities you're in. That's helpful. What about you, Andy? Yeah, so the positions for 2022 are posted. Um, so mm -hmm. like I just mentioned, as far as going out to our careers page, you can see that electrical position, the mechanical position, and then the product process materials, which again, we group together. Um, so if you're interested in the 2022 opportunity, definitely go out to our website and go ahead and apply. Um, during the application process, we use Workday as our vendor. Um, a lot of companies do that um, or use Workday. And so you, know, you have the ability to, like Mitchell said, upload your resume. You can upload, I believe, your transcript. Um, one of the things that students should be aware of uh, for our Kimberly Clark program, you need to have a 3.0 minimum GPA yeah. um, in order to be considered. And so that's one thing, you know, as students that are interested in our program should, should think about. Um, as far as, uh, you know, the positions right now, we are, we are recruiting. Um, so like Mitchell said, as far as when it really gets busy, Again, um, same thing um, as Georgia Pacific. We're really focused on a lot of our career fair events come September. Um, but by all means, you know, we have students that are a little bit more proactive, right? And, and reach out to us, you know, during the summertime and, and talk to us a little bit about their interest and what they want to accomplish for next year. And we can start that dialogue now. There's nothing that says we have to wait till September, right? In order to interview and, and consider a student. It's just that that's when a lot of the career fairs start for, for campuses. But by all means, I think recruiting is definitely evolving. Um, and instead of just being a little bit in September and October and a little bit in January, February, um, with all the different platforms that are out there, as Mitchell was talking, the social platforms and then platforms such as Handshake, 
you know, we're re really able to talk to students anywhere in the country pretty much 365 days a year. Um, and that's something that's really changed over the last couple of years where before you were focused on a crazy six weeks in September, October, and a crazy six weeks like in January, February, that world is really changing. That's great. That's very helpful. Um, let's see, in terms of the interview process, uh, how many interviews occur during the hiring process? Um, who will the students be interviewed by? And you may have just answered the question, but are they in this day and age, are they in person or virtually or hybrid? Either one of you can start. Yeah, go ahead, Mitchell. Yeah, so <clears throat> as I kind of stated, I'm mainly involved uh, with the campus recruiting um, and the career fair side of things and recruiting on campuses. So I can speak to that behalf. Um, as far as the interviews go, um, if when we meet you at the career fair, uh, we have an interest, we'll be scheduling next day interviews. Um, we'll sit down right away. You'll be sitting down most likely with myself and one other individual on our either mechanical or electrical engineering team here at the mill. Um, we'll do a, a nice painless 45 minute interview just to try to get to know you a little better, see how you react in certain situations. Um, should we feel that, that you're a candidate that fits our position? Um, we are prepared to make you know, offers as soon as necessary, um, depending on how well we feel you fit that position. Um, so it'll only be a single painless interview to rip off the Band-Aid and get through that process because I know everyone looks forward to that. Um, so that's our interviewing process. And I forget what the second question was there. I apologize. Oh, um, are they in person, virtual, oh. hybrid? Yeah, primarily. Um, you know, once again, from the visibility that I get, um, we do prefer in-person um, mm -hmm. interviews to get to, to make that personal connection. Okay, that's helpful. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, you know, Mitchell was spot on. Um, pretty much the process is very similar. Okay. It definitely has changed quite a bit in the last year, um, where before it was pretty much all in-person, right? It, we're definitely much more virtual than we've ever been, which is kind of, where we're evolving um, as a as a college recruitment department, and and definitely you know just overall recruiting. Um, so I think it'll depend this fall. Um, you know, in some cases we're going to be on campus with career fairs. In other cases, there are schools that are doing more virtual, and so we'll be interviewing students um, in that format. So a little bit of both. Um, but as far as the process goes, you know, typically it's it's kind of that pre-screen or, or talking to us. Um, you know, at, either at a career fair or maybe at a virtual chat and then doing, like Mitchell said, that kind of 45 minute interview with um, typically a recruiter who's on campus or helping out virtually and probably just like Georgia Pacific. So, you know, I'm in charge of the overall co-op program for KC. And then what we do is we have teams um, made up of engineers from KC, right, who actually recruit on campus. So like, for instance, when we go to UW Platteville. Um, there's a campus team made up of engineers from KC who are graduates of UW Platteville. Great. Um, we've got about four more minutes. I'm going to stop asking questions and uh, offer up uh, an opportunity for uh, you to uh, speak about anything that you want that I may not have asked about that I missed and that you think would be relevant to students listening to this. Either one of you, Mitchell? Yeah, yeah I can go ahead and uh, sure. lead off. Yeah. Um, so the one thing, at least with, with my past experience doing co-ops and internships uh, that, you know, sales pitch time, I guess, I think GP does a good job of with their co-ops um, is you do get to work side by side with a full-time engineer. You're managing your own projects. You know, you're in charge of your own communications, running meetings, you know, properly documenting your information, writing scope documents, working with contractors, you're managing budgets. You know, you get to use some of your engineering skills you learned in school. If you're sizing pumps or sometimes you have to throw together some statics projects to make sure this pin assembly you're designing is adequately rated for what you're going to try to pin up. Um, so you get to bring in some of your engineering principles you learned into school. Um, you get to work with your safety and environmental departments, getting to learn about risk reduction and environmental permitting and stuff. So really you get a large full scale experience of the complete project cycle um, that allows you to tune in a lot of skills. You're getting to work with a lot of different individuals, you know, from the mills, from contractors, um, 
individuals on the floor. So it's a unique opportunity to get to, I guess, develop your skills and your communication skills um, that I think is very rewarding. It's not just, uh, I know this is a stereotypical thing that everyone says, and I've said it before too, but you aren't just doing paper pushing work uh, as a co-op with GP, you're doing exactly what the full-time engineers in your position would do. So there's no better way to find out if you would like this kind of a position, if you'd like managing projects, if you'd like working with contractors, um, then to try it. And with this opportunity, you'll definitely get a full-scale opportunity to try that on probably about six to seven different projects. That's great. Thank you, Mitchell. Andy? Yep, just like Mitchell was agreeing. <laughs> yeah. uh, same thing. I, I think when you look at it, right, I think you've got two companies here with, with GP and KC that um, both have very strong co-op programs and are looking for a lot of the same things. 100% um, agree with what Mitchell was saying as far as working alongside engineers and working on projects. Um, and Mitchell alluded to it before as far as locations. I think one of the things that you know, students should really, you know, especially here with Wisconsin students, should think about with GP and KC is that as a co-op, you have that experience to, you're from Wisconsin, you've probably been in Wisconsin most of your life for a lot of students. This is your opportunity to go check out maybe some other locations. If you wanna stay in Wisconsin, like Mitchell said, I think we both have some pretty good opportunities in Wisconsin, um, but from a manufacturing standpoint, since that's the room we're in, um, you know, think about if you grew up in Wisconsin, you've been in Wisconsin, you maybe wanna try out a different part of the country and GP's got that position or Casey's got that position, really think about it because this is your opportunity for maybe six months to leave Wisconsin, right? And, and get that awesome experience. And maybe full-time you wanna be in Wisconsin, but this is your opportunity as a co-op to leave the state and, and try a new experience and get some really good manufacturing experience under your belt that other students just won't be able to accomplish. Great, well, this was excellent. Thank you both.